Hey, how's it going? So, uh, one of my favorite things to learn about, to study, and to do is etymology. So, etymology is the science of the original meaning of words. So, when you're when you're studying etymolo etymology or doing etymology, what you're doing is basically taking a word and breaking it down to its constituent parts and uh, discovering what these small parts mean. So when you do this, what you're actually discovering is the way that people talk. When you, uh, not the way that they only talk, but the way that they actually think and process information. So when you are able to break down et etymology, what you're doing is breaking down the origins of the thought, thought process behind a certain word. So etymology is the meaning of words. So actually etymology itself, the etymology of etymology is the word etom, which is truth, and logic, logi. So the, the, the original truth, the, so logic is uh, something like biology or sociology, which is a study of something, uh, uh, to study something. So etymology is a study of the truth. So when you know the true essence of a word, then you know exactly what is going on. So for example, we have <clears throat> we have uh, a universe, and when we when we understand what a universe actually is, it is uni is one and verse is a group of words. So everything in the universe is created by a group of words. So this group of words is let there be light. This group of words is a vibration, a frequency, a sound, a big bang. Because every vibration in my in my words right now is creating a sound. So if I'm powerful enough to create birds, trees, and mosquitoes, then when I speak to the universe, the, the sound of my voice will sound like a huge big bang. So this is a vibration, it is a sound. So the universe is uni verse so uni one verse words so everything is created through words so it's important to understand the words that we actually use and how they actually apply to everything that we are experiencing so the words that we use apply to the thought process behind every action so how we think and how we behave how we actually process information is determined by etymology so we <clears throat> so the etymology of etymology is interesting as well so etom and logi so this is truth and study studying the truth etymology so another way to look at this is also like this let me uh, quickly show you what I'm talking about so etymology is also uh, like a breakdown of certain words so there is this um, there is this thing so this is so this is an a this is uh, an a right there right so this is how you actually write an a but then there is this there is this um, symbol here so this is an a and an e so this is actually where we actually get something like this all right this should be straight like this here so something like this this is uh the capital of that so a e so this is uh what you call ash it's called the ash tree so this is the ash tree and this is used in certain languages so when we have this this is the 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 root of the word etymology so with this one what we have is actually this so we have this et from this eight et so from this we actually have um the root of this we're actually talking about eat okay from this from this so from from this ash right from from this ash tree this is where this is where we have words like uh eon which is a e o uh n eon and uh, daemon or demon this is the same ash tree that we use in order to have this type of word so when we are talking about etymology we also have this as etymology so et so we have etymology okay so we have more 
or molo so mol is also molo is also mal okay so we have eat mal so we have et right etymology and here we have logi so logi means logic and logic means log so um we use logs this is not really a log this is actually a highlighter that i'm using as a marker so we use sticks as logs to write words so every study is uh deducted from that uh process that we use a stick of wood in order to write a word so the words are logos the word became flesh which is the logos so logos is an idea and we also use leaves leaves from trees which have logs to write the words so the trees have a lot to do with our words so this is et t all right so this would be a y so this is this is etymology so what we have with with etymology we actually have eat we have we have we have three parts of this constituent word we have eat more and logi so this is eating this is mal like malfunctioning not working or this is just difficult or hard right so etymology eat mal logic which is uh, the study logic of things right logi the study of things that are hard to swallow this is etymology so some of the things in etymology are very very difficult to grasp and understand and they sound kind of crazy when you actually say them so our english language comes from uh the the egyptian the egyptian uh, alphabet which was taken by the phoenicians the phoenicians gave it to the greeks and the greeks gave it to the romans and the romans used it as latin and the latins latinized everyone actually romanced everyone and now we have romance languages or roman languages and this is now what we speak so all of our languages have a common root and a common source so everybody started speaking languages at a certain point so this is um spoken of in genesis chapter 11 i think so there's a story about the tower of babel so when they were creating this tower the gods came down and didn't like what they were doing for one reason or another and then they confused their language and when these when these languages were confused everybody started babbling so all of these people started babbling and then the romans created their own empire and when they were consolidating their power what they did is that they took everyone else's language and then they gave them the roman languages so they actually romanced them so through this romancing they were uh, distinguishing the civilians which are people who are subject to civil law as opposed to common law or in relation to common law and the barbarians which are the babblers which are from babel from babel so that everyone could speak the same language so even right now um if someone is not able to speak english they are regarded to be uncivilized and barbaric because it's from babel so everyone who's speaking this language is actually in babylon because this is how it was actually formed so this is the root of the languages in terms of how it actually came about in an alphabet so alphabet actually means aleph and beth aleph means first beth means second aleph is where we get alpha which is first or the first wave so this is a, an actual frequency and then beth is second which is where we get beta so we have alpha male and beta males so we have alphabet alpha bet so with this we have a certain frequency that this language is actually on so these are not the most uh, transcendental frequencies but with these frequencies we have a little bit of the understanding that is limited with these two frequencies because we also have the del the del delta and uh, theta waves which are what we engage when you close your mouth and you start speaking like right now i can close my mouth and and start saying words in my head so i'm using a different frequency so 
with my alphabet I'm using a certain frequency with my thoughts I'm using a certain frequency as well so this is how this actually works so etymology is et mal logi which is et eating mal bad hard difficult logi study the study of things that are difficult to swallow so um, this is the study of the true origins of the language etymology is actually the study of the truth so when you study the truth you actually gain a different understanding of what the world is like and how it actually came about why we say certain things why we do certain things and how people actually came about creating different words and uh, why those words stuck and why we call certain things certain things so um, our language is consistently evolving and etymology is something that is really interesting and fascinating if you're really into the study of the truth so you shall know the truth and the truth shall shall set you free so um so that is pretty much it uh, about the etymology of etymology and the the study of etymology and some of the advantages about it that you actually do know the truth and uh, the disadvantage is you actually know the truth, which is something that could be hard to swallow. So uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And if you're really into some uh, cool books about etymology, I have I've read this uh, book about the, it's called the Etymology Con, and the Etymology Con, or it yeah the Etymology Con, and I actually have a video about how. I found the experience of reading that book and I'll be sure to link it to this video but um, that book is amazing and this could be a great start and it speaks about so many different things in such a witty way and I'll just link to it if you want to learn more about that book you can just see that video so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon